Hi guys, um, welcome back. Um, if you've never been here before, I'm Shannon. Um, I am the mother of a 15-year-old teenager with Tourette's Syndrome. And so this is a vlog that I do mainly just for me. But if you're here, thanks for being here. <laughs> um, okay, so the last 48 hours have been kind of crazy. So we went to our first neurology appointment um, yesterday and... It was interesting. I mean, it. We, they really didn't tell us anything that we didn't already really know. They just kind of confirmed a few things. But I felt like... I felt like the point was a little rushed. Um, I didn't... We really didn't do any real testing or anything like that. We just talked about what had already been done. Um, talked about treatment. Talked about getting her support. Which is... All these things are important. I just wondered why we weren't doing any real tests. Um... To rule out certain things that I kind of wanted to look at, you know, um, I felt a little dismissive because the things that I told her that I thought had happened, she was like, no, that doesn't happen with Tourette's. No, that doesn't happen with Tourette's. No, that doesn't happen with Tourette's. And I'm like, okay, so if it doesn't happen with Tourette's, then, but it happened, I saw it, you know, I know I didn't make it up in my head. Um, other people saw it, doctors saw it, you know, her primary care physician saw it, um, you know, it's just, it was weird. The whole thing was weird. Number one, I didn't, I mean, not that there's anything wrong with, with nurse practitioners. I have a nurse practitioner that I have for a primary care physician and that's who I go to and it's fine. But when you send somebody to a specialist, especially a child, you would think that the general neurologist would want to see her, not a nurse practitioner of neurology. And I thought that was kind of strange. Um, and then it was kind of, it kind of felt to me like she was just kind of the person to screen through in case it was a really bad case. And then we, and then we bring in the big neurologist and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm thinking a little, maybe I'm overthinking it, but that's how it felt. Cause there was just at the beginning of the, of the appointment, there was a nurse that came in. She said, she's going to answer all your questions. She's going to take all the time you need, blah, 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 blah. And then when she came in, she had a student with her, which that's fine. I'm totally okay with a student looking at my child as long as there's somebody you know, nearby that's supervising that, you know, that's how they learn. And that's what needs to happen. So we can have more doctors like this for my kid. But it was kind of like, I don't know how to put it because it's just, it was so surreal to me. I mean, we were literally in the appointment for less than 30 minutes total. And I just felt like we're not going to do an EEG. We're not going to do an MRI. We're not going to rule out seizures. We're not going to rule out epilepsy or anything else. Nothing. We're just Yep, she's got Tourette's and that's it. And then talk about how much water she's drinking and that she can't have caffeine. And like, those were all things I already knew. Anybody, anybody with a phone would know those things. Um, um, we talked about, I don't know, it was just kind of frustrating. And I felt like, you know, I felt like I didn't really get to ask everything because I was so off put <laughs> I kind of lost my train of thought with her and you know I'm doing this you know this appointment with my husband in tow and there's things that I remember from Jocelyn when she was a baby and there's stuff I don't and he remembers it better um and then you know she did talk to Jocelyn which was nice and I, I appreciate that kind of thing and I did mention it to her as like I want her to be treated like a person I want you to ask her questions I want to do what she wants to do and um you know, because it's very important to me for Jocelyn to feel like she has some sense of control of what's going on. Um, I do understand my, my responsibility as a parent. I know that there's lines that if it, if it crosses, then I have to step in, but we're not there yet. And so when we started talking about the three ways to, to treat her, her tics, um, Number one, Jocelyn's been telling me from the get-go that her tics are not severe enough to, um, for her to want to be on medication because she doesn't want to go through the side effects because we've done medication before and it wasn't a very good experience for her. She doesn't want to be a zombie. She doesn't want to sleep all the time. Um, she does want to be able to sleep at night, but she doesn't want to sleep all the time. She doesn't want to be out of it. Um. A lot of the medications that they give basically put a delay between the the dopamine receptors. And so, I mean, what is that like? 
you know, most people are taking meds so they can get more dopamine, not so that they can have less. And we already have a child that's depressive and, you know, has anxiety and all these other things. How does that, how does that work? You know, and, and I don't feel like I've really had an opportunity to really ask questions. It's like, we're just naming off prescriptions and I don't know what they mean and I don't know what they'll do. And I don't have enough time to make a decision before I start throwing pills at a kid and I don't want to do that anymore. Um, and that's not what she wants to do. You know, she wants to be able to, um, you know, I could understand it if Jocelyn's tics were offensive. Um, really the only problem that Jocelyn has with her tics is other people's response to her tics. It's not even her response to tics. It's other people setting her off and other people telling her that she's faking. And, you know, it's other people. It's not that she's ashamed or worried about taking too much or whatever. It's more of the, you know, the stressors and things that cause ticks. That's, that's the stuff. It's if she can avoid that stuff, then she's golden. You know, it's just the world's not going to let her do that all the time. And so, um, that's, what's hard is, you know, I don't, I don't want to medicate, make her take medication that she doesn't want to take when it's not necessary. And we can just change things in her, in her environment and her lifestyle and her routine. If we can do that and make it easier for her instead of making it to where she's not the normal Jocelyn, then I don't want to do that. And especially if she doesn't want to do that. Um, the last thing that I want Jocelyn to do is to feel like we want to, you know, fix her. We don't want to fix her because she's not broken. Um, this is just who she is. And we, we can help her with whatever suffering that she's doing. But this isn't how she wants to do it right now. And until she dies, unless she gets to a point where she develops corporealia or she becomes offensive or she becomes harmful to herself or other people, then we, you know, without her saying so, that's when we're going to cross the line. That's when me and Eric are going to say, you know, you can't do this. You know, we've got to do something else. But until then, until she gives us the nod, we're, we're probably not going to do it. And we did talk about, you know, um, we talked about a neuropsych eval, um, so we can, you know, rule out ADD and, um, I would like to get her dyslexia documented. Um, I know she has it, but it's never been documented. So like, I don't have that, you know, IEP where she's going to go to, um, the college in a couple of years and do this course for, for homeschool. It's like a half a day course. And, um, but if she doesn't have that, um, when she tests in, she's not going to have any, um, any help, you know, she's not going to have, um, I can't remember what the word is, you know, just help, help, you know, get, it, get these things that give her more time and, you know, um, to read and to do the things that she needs to do because she needs more time. Um, she actually needs somebody to help her do it. You know, like, um, she needs a thing that reads it to her and it would go a lot faster, but, um, a lot of times they won't allow those, but, um, who knows in two years they may lift that and allow it. We'll just see what happens. Um, we, um, we had a good day yesterday out for the most part. Other than that, I mean, I left the appointment feeling like, I kept asking Eric, you know, I was like, did you, did you notice this or did you notice that? And he's like, babe, it's fine. You know, that's a lot of it is he's just happy we saw a doctor. You know, it's like, I know. I mean, it's just, didn't it, did it seem dismissive? You know, to, am, am I the jerk here? You know, I'm like, I don't, I don't think I am. <laughs> it's like, I'm just, it just didn't seem right. It didn't seem like we, it didn't seem like we really got what we came for. You know, all we got was confirmation of what we already knew. And so I'm like, there has to be something else. And maybe I'm, like I said, maybe I'm overthinking it, but I would much rather rule things out than just say, nope, she doesn't have anything else. Nope. This is, you're just, you're just making it up in your head. And I'm like, I know I'm not. I know that there's things that have taken place in this past year. I know I'm not. And it's just, I hope I'm not, I mean, I hope I'm wrong. That's the thing is like, I really hope I'm wrong. I just want to make sure so that we're not not treating something that needs to be treated. Like if she's got ADD and she's suffering because of it, then, and we can help her, then by all means, let's help her. But to just, to just go, you know, it wasn't really that she didn't want to do the psyche valve. It was, well, I'm not going to, it was, 
your primary care physician has to order that. And I'm like, but they told me that you need to order it. So I feel like I'm going to be going in a circle for a minute and I'm just going to put my foot down with somebody and say, look, somebody order this thing because I want it done. It should have been done a long time ago. It needs to be done. And so I'm just frustrated. But, um, and I know that I got some answers yesterday, which, and we made some decisions and that was all good. And Jocelyn feels very in control of, of what's going on with her and her body. That's wonderful. Um, however, <laughs> I just want, um, I made an appointment with her primary care physician today. We're going to go on Friday. We're going to get a, um, we're going to try to get a referral for a different doctor, one that specializes directly in Tourette's syndrome. And, um, another friend of mine, another mom, of my, uh, another mom friend of mine, uh, told me about her and that's who they use for their son. And so I'm going to try that. And, um, I, I do have an appointment set up for four months from now. We're just supposed to, uh, keep track of her headaches or her migraines or whatever, um, and when those, how regularly those happen and they want us to keep track of that, come back in four months, probably to try to talk her into meds again. Um, I don't see any point in that, but I mean, if it gets worse, yes, absolutely. But, um, I'm going to, I'm going to take Jocelyn's lead on this right now. She doesn't want to be on meds and I don't want to make her, I don't want to make her be on medication. She doesn't want to be on at 15 years old, um, to where she doesn't feel like she's herself. Um, I don't need a a more depressed child who thinks I'm trying to, you know, medicate something away that she, you know, that she feels isn't something she wants to do. So for now, that's, that's where we're at. Um, she, <laughs> there were a lot of ticks yesterday, <laughs> of course, because we were talking about Tourette's pretty much all day. And so there was a lot of ticks. Um, she's kind of a sniffle right now. No fever. She's okay. Um, I think it's allergies, honestly. And, um, so, um, all the kittens found a home today. They left. That was nice. So now she has a room back. She can sleep. So that's good. And that's what we're working on is, um, there were some changes. Um, some, th some things that we talked about, like, um, screen time needs to be like finito, like an hour and a half before bed. Um, more water. She needs to be eating regularly. These are all things that we already knew and she should have been doing anyways. We were just fighting with her on them. But now that we have a doctor that says like, mm, the doctor says so. So at least we have a little bit of backup there, which is good. Um, but, um, other than that, I mean, um, I talked to her uh, about like social media and being around other people that tick and all that stuff like that. If it was going to hurt her, they, she said, no, it's not going to hurt her. TikTok's not going to hurt her. She's going to pick up ticks from anywhere. It doesn't matter where she picks them up. She's going to pick them up. Um, it's not that big of a deal. Um, it's not going to make it, I mean, her ticks are going to be what they are. And, um, and so it doesn't really matter where they come from. But, um, but other than that, um, it was a, like I said, it was a short visit and, um, it was a lot of hype for, for not a lot of payoff. And, um, I'm glad that we got it done though, finally. And I know that I have a neurologist that has said, yes, that's Tourette's. That's good. I, I like that. I can deal with that, but, um, life's good right now. And, um, so Friday is, uh, Friday's, uh, <laughs> sorry, Friday's the doctor's appointment. We'll get a referral. Um, but anyways, that's pretty much what happened in the last 48 hours. And, um, um, want to thank everybody who's been supportive from, uh, our Tourette's group and wherever else y'all are coming from. Um, and I hope there's other moms out there, you know, please feel free to say hi. Um, I love making new Tourette mom friends. I would love some more. Um, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.